Pour hot tap water into your hot water bath. Set the temperature dial to the 1 on the 140 degree mark. Dry the custom tray where you will add the modeling compound to the edge of the flange. If you don't, the compound may not stick to the tray. Use a Bunsen burner or a butane torch to soften the compound. A Hano alcohol torch will not normally heat the compound enough to soften it thoroughly. Warm the compound until it just starts to droop. Do not overheat it, boil it, or burn it. Add it to the edge of the flange in a thickness just slightly thinner than the unwarmed stick. Temper the compound in the water bath so it does not burn the patient. The compound will stay soft as long as it is in the water. Try to keep the wax spacer out of the water so it doesn't melt. Remove the custom tray from the water bath and place it interorally, rotating it into place. Seat it firmly, then shape the compound by pulling on the lips and the cheeks. Use circular motions to pull and shape the compound periphery. Chill the compound in ice water so it doesn't distort. If the compound has properly touched the vestibular tissues, it will lose the gloss and look matte like it does here. Once you have one segment molded, you can add additional compound and move along to the next segment of the tray. If you need to, you can actually shape the compound with some wet fingers. This may get it in the right place to be able to mold it more effectively. When you add the compound to a segment that you previously molded, make sure you use your torch to blend and, and ensure that you have a glossy, seamless finish between the segments. Temper in the water bath before you reinsert the custom tray. After molding, remove the compound and check to make sure there's no seams and also that you've got the tissue detail, such as the phenol attachments, and that you have a matte finish. Continue to mold different segments of the custom tray, pulling on the cheek, using circular motions to adapt the tissue and mold the compound. Pull the lip up and inspect to make sure that you have room for the phrenal attachments. In the area of the labial phrenum, make sure that the compound is very soft before you insert it. The labial phrenum is very displaceable and if there's any body left in the compound, it will actually displace the phrenum. Place the tray in the patient's mouth after tempering in the water bath. Pull downwards and outwards very, uh, in a very pronounced fashion. Also have the patient make pursing motions with their lip. Puckering motions will help to mold the labial phrenum and make sure that it has enough relief. If you've molded the compound properly, you will probably find that some of it will fold over onto the buckle surface and it will make the flange much thicker than you want. You can use a red handle knife with a scalpel blade and thin and blend the compound with the rest of the tray. Make sure to use a good finger rest so you don't cut yourself when you're doing this. The object is to get the periphery so that it's three to five millimeters in width. Make sure to blend it with the tray so that the, the junction is seamless. You don't want compound to fold underneath the tray and actually raise the tray away from the tissue. If some of the compound does fold over there, heat your scalpel blade, cut a line through the compound, and remove it from the spacer. At the posterior border of the tray, the compound is placed on top of the tray, not on its edge. You should have trimmed the tray to the posterior palatal seal already, and you don't want to overextend it. If the wax spacer is too close to the posterior border of the tray, you may actually have to remove a little bit of this so that the compound is sitting on top of the tray and not on the wax. Otherwise, when you remove the wax spacer, it will crack the compound off of the tray. Add compound to the posterior border of the custom tray. Add it on top of the tray, not on the posterior border. You want to make sure that you don't extend past the vibrating line. Then flame the compound with your torch. Temper it back in the water bath. Then place it interorally under firm pressure. You want to use enough pressure to make sure that the tray is fully seated. Then have the patient open wide to activate the pterygomandibular raphae and have them move from side to side so any coronoid interferences are eliminated. 
intraorally, use your mouth mirror to check that the posterior border of the compound is not past the marked vibrating line. For review, molding on the buccal and posterior borders, pull the cheek downward, outwards, circular motions. Have the patient move from side to side. Have their chin move from side to side. Have them open very wide. These things will affect the border of the compound and mold it as you do them. Here the patient is opening, moving from side to side to contour the distal buccal aspects of the softened compound. In the mandible, the procedures are much the same. First, we would start by adjusting the uh, custom tray, uh, pulling on the lips and cheeks, and making sure that the tray doesn't pull up uh, as we make functional movements of the lip and cheek. We would tr try that on both sides and in the anterior vestibule to make sure that there is room for the labial frenum. Once we are happy with the extension of the tray, uh, we would go ahead and start the border mold. If there are any overextensions, then we'll take the tray out, take a burr, and adjust and trim to make sure that the tray stays in place without movement during extensions. Here we're trying the tray back in the patient's mouth to ensure that we don't have any overextensions. In the mandible, the area that you'll have to take a little bit more extra time with is the lingual vestibule. You have the lingual frenum that's in the way. You have to make sure there's room for that. And there's special movements that we'll have the patient make uh, with their tongue, lifting their tongue up to the roof of the mouth, also sticking their tongue out forward uh, and licking their top lip from side to side, uh, making sure again that the tray doesn't move while the patient is making these functional movements. When border molding in the mandible, particularly in the lingual area, we will simulate these same motions. We'll have the patient stick their tongue out, move their tongue from side to side, lick their upper lip, as well as all of the buccal types of movements we used in the maxillary arch. The basic procedures are the same. The movements in relation to the lingual aspect of the denture are a little bit different. Otherwise, it's a very similar procedure.